Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. Greek voters may be about to plunge the European Union into a full-fledged economic and political crisis. Opinion polls suggest the leftist anti-austerity party Syriza is likely to emerge as the biggest party in Greece's late January election. And if so, the next Athens government may reject the terms of the bailout, which is keeping the country afloat. Then what? Well, my guest today is Kostas Lapavitsas, a London-based Greek economist who's been advising Syriza's leaders. Could Greece be on its way out of the euro? Kostas Lapavitsas, welcome to Hard Talk. It's a pleasure, thank you. Greece has been wrestling with economic and political crisis for what, half a dozen years. Now, Greeks face an election. What is at stake in this election, do you believe? I think this is probably the most important election since the fall of the uh, dictatorship in 1974. It's going to set the terms of um, country's growth and the performance of its uh, society and economy for a very long time. Much is at stake and much is at stake for Europe too. You, it seems, want Greece to tear up the deals that it has done in the recent past. You want it to abandon the course it has adopted and in a very real sense go it alone, expose itself in a new way. Is that sensible? I think Syriza um, um, is a very sensible uh, organization uh, right now. I think the program it's put forth is a lot more sensible than the program that uh, the Troika has imposed on Greece. Anyone who approaches this in, uh, in good faith will definitely tell you that what Syriza is proposing to do makes much more economic sense than what the Troika is asking Greece to do. But in a sense, it's an interesting moment for Greece because Greece knows what the conditions are upon which it currently operates. They may not be pleasant, they are extraordinarily difficult and we're going to talk about that, but Greece knows the reality of what it is to be involved in a bailout deal with the so-called Troika. What you and Syriza, the party, are suggesting to Greeks is that it is actually better to gamble, to go into the unknown, to abandon the course that's been followed so far and do something radical and different. And I would put it to you that the, the worst time to gamble is when you are in a very weak and vulnerable position, as Greece is today. I don't think that Syriza is gambling at the moment. I think that what's happening is Greece cannot take it any longer. I think that's what's happening. Syriza didn't create the situation because it's particularly clever or capable. It's actually the population that has swung behind it. And they've swung behind it because the existing program has failed. And people know it has failed. Nothing basically works. Greece has been destroyed economically and its society has been basically dismantled. And Greeks want their way out. And they're ho putting their hopes in Syriza. Well, Let's uh, get down to the detail of what Syriza is. You are, and you have been for some time, advising Syriza's leadership on economic matters. You're not the only economic advisor. They've far got from, a whole range of them. And from. that, in a way, is part of the problem. It's very difficult, apart from Mr. Tsipras, who sits at the top of the party, it's very difficult to see that there is any coherent ideology or organization beyond a vague brand of hard left philosophy that underpin Syriza. Is it a coherent organization? It has a coherent um, economic um, commission or economic committee, whichever way you're going to describe it, and it has a clear program. Well, uh, frankly, committees aren't always the best way to establish a very clear but you need, direction, are they? But you need the committee to work out a program. 
and uh, he has a bunch of economists who get together and discuss what who often disagree do. with each other of course but because of, again you have made it plain over years that you believe one of the fundamental mistakes Greek Greece has made since the beginning of this crisis is staying in the eurozone you want out but I, there are other key advisors yeah. who say absolutely not one yeah. thing that Syriza must be committed to is staying in so I, what, what is the policy I personally I have argued this but that's not the line of Syriza the line of Syriza is very very different Syriza has two legs to its strategy and I can be very quick about them. The first is uh, Greece needs debt relief. Greece needs a debt write-off. Syriza argues this very powerfully. It needs a severe substantial reduction of its debt. Second, Greece needs a different fiscal policy. The, 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 the policy of austerity imposed on Greece at the moment makes absolutely no sense at all. Syriza wants to stop going for primary budget surpluses, which are killing the economy, and go for a balanced budget uh, expansion. Both of these things are very sensible. They're basically mild Keynesianism. That's what it is. All right, let's take those in order. Let's start with the write-off. Of course, the, the, the most obvious point to make about a debt write-off is that it takes two to tango for a debt write-off. You seem to be assuming, you and others in Syriza, that the European Central Bank, the IMF, the European Union member states who are relevant to this are all going to be happy to engage in a new debt write-off with a post-election Greek government. What on earth makes you think that? <laughs> I don't think anyone in Syriza expects that the, the partners uh, uh, of Greece in the Eurozone or the lenders uh, will be happy with this, who likes to take, to take losses, obviously. Um, however, the IMF itself um, has clearly argued that Greece needs a write-off, and the IMF is part of the Troika. So uh, Syriza basically is stating the obvious in this regard. Greece well, you, you, may quote, you may quote to me the IMF. I could quote to you the German finance minister, Wolfgang ah. Schauble, who says quite clearly, Greece must stick by all the promises and commitments it has made. Mm. So my own view and the expectation of Syriza, I believe, pretty much, is that there will be... Uh, conflict. There will be serious negotiation and there will be a negotiation uh, that will be quite tense because obviously no one likes to lose money and much of the Greek debt is uh, held by official lenders and it will be very difficult to accept losses. What kind of a write-off are you talking about? One of your colleague advisors, if I can put it that way, John Milios, uh, he says that Greece must insist upon a 50% write-off of, of debt. Is that what you're seriously suggesting is going to happen? If Greece is to reach Maastricht level, uh, levels of debt, then it needs two-thirds of its debt writing off. Two-thirds? Um, you mm. go even further? Yeah, if it, if it is to reach that, uh, that level, 60%. I mean, this is now, fantasy. That's not I going to be agreed. That, I, I, believe so. that, I believe that this is very difficult to, <laughs> to, to go to. But Greece definitely needs a very substantial write-off. My own calculations show that um, we're talking tens of billions, possibly hundreds of billions, in the hundreds of billions. How do you think the Irish or the Portuguese or the other Europeans who have stuck by their debt commitments, the promises they made, and had to live with that austerity and have seen it through, how do you think they would feel if they... Greece suddenly got a 50% or two-thirds write-off? Um, they will... Um... Not, uh, they will think that they need, that they would like part of that themselves, which is why Syriza officially calls for a debt conference uh, in Europe, and a conference of all borrowers and lenders, to sort, to sort the debt problem out for everyone. Because obviously, if you give a debt write-off to one person, you create a knock-on effect for the others and an example for the others. Uh, the current Prime Minister, uh, Mr Samaras, he, he says there's no question if Syriza wins this election, Greece is facing bankruptcy. Uh, to s switch that idea around a little bit, are you prepared to take this all the way to default. If you can't get agreement on a write-down of debt, are you saying to the ECB, the IMF, you know what, we'll just walk away from these debts. We will default. The official position of Syriza at the moment is that Syriza will take no unilateral uh, action. Uh, default is unilateral action. You're, you're refusing to pay. The official position of Syriza is no unilateral action. Uh, series of wishes. Well, so, so, sorry to interrupt, but, but this is so interesting, I can't help it. I mean, what you're saying is Syriza has given away its key card. It's already said that this is a game of bluff, because when push comes to shove, Syriza will not walk away. So all of the cards really are in the hands of the Germans, the ECB, because they know that Syriza, in the end, will blink. Now we're coming to the re really difficult issues here, and I can only give you my own personal view, not the view of Syriza uh, on this one. Uh, Syriza, as I said to you, wishes 
declares openly that there will be no unilateral uh, action. In my view, uh, much of this will depend on what the Greek people are prepared to take and what the uh, opposition by the lenders uh, is going to be like. If the lenders are hard, as, and they're likely to be hard, and if they refuse a write-off, then there will be confrontation. And then we will see what the Greeks want to do uh, right. on this issue. We'll come back to the issue of Greece's relationship with the Eurozone and Berlin and Brussels in a moment. But, but let's just go to the other strand of what you were talking about. You said partly this is about debt relief, partly it's about a different apo approach to fiscal policy and budgets in Greece moving forward. Indeed. Syriza's policies are quite extraordinary. They talk about restoring the minimum wage the way it was before the crisis, restoring pensions with huge pension hikes. They talk about spending billions on anti-poverty measures and more billions on, a, on a, 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 a stimulus package. They speak as though they're not aware that the debt, the national debt is 175%. Now, even if you get some sort of a write down, the sort of spending measures and indeed tax cuts that Syria, Syriza is talking about seem completely absurd in the current Greek context. I beg to differ, they're actually very, very sensible. What is absurd is the policy that Troika is, the Troika is imposing on Greece at the moment. Greece has had 25% contraction of GDP. This is an economy in permafrost. It's not going anywhere. And yet... Well, actually, with respect, it, it, it is sort of growing now. 0.8% well, last year, a bit more growth this year. The OECD mm -hmm. saying that looking forward, that the investment is coming into Greece now and that uh, actually there are some ways in which one can be optimistic about growth in Greece moving the, forward. The credibility of these uh, assessments... Um, is uh, very low, to put it politely. I've read uh, in full detail the, what the IMF expects, and it doesn't persuade uh, anyone seriously that Greece will chalk up more than 3% growth uh, every year for the next five years. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, what's going to happen under current circumstances is that Greece will chug along. Why? Because we've got an economy in permafrost, as I said, and the IMF is demanding, or the Troika is demanding, huge uh, surpluses uh, primary surpluses. This is absurd. A second year undergraduate uh, 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 student in economics would have told you you don't do that to an economy. Why is it being done? Because the surpluses will be used to pay off the debt. That's the, that's the reason. But the debt is unpayable. Everybody knows that. So it's nonsense. It's just nonsense. It doesn't add up. But, but even you, surely, with all your faith in Syriza's sort of tax and spend policies, even you would acknowledge that Greece can't really get growth going, meaningful growth, without outside foreign investment, for example. And outside foreign investment ain't going to happen if Syriza wins. Because we've seen over the last few months, as it's become a real prospect that Syriza might win, we've seen all sorts of investors in leaked memos and other, other uh, means of communication. They, they, they've said that they are deeply worried about Syriza. To quote one investor uh, at a London meeting where Syriza representatives were, were at present, the conclusion was that Cyprus's, Alex Cyprus's programme was, quote, worse than communism and promised total chaos. Um, again, we move into uh, uncharted waters in some ways. Syriza proposes a kind of mild Keynesianism, as I mentioned to you just before. This isn't radical. This isn't uh, out of the world. Well, well, this, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is balanced, balanced budget. Well, we've already established one of the key advisors is a Marxist. You yourself are a leftist. You're not just a mild Keynesian. I mean, you, but the you, policy the policy is one of mild Keynesianism. This is not a Marxist revolutionary program. I, I, in any un, under any reading of the uh, of the situation, this is a mild Keynesian policy of abandoning austerity. Now, you ask me, is this feasible? within the confines of the uh, Monetary Union and the European Union. Well, before we get, no, just address the point that it does not attract any confidence from the sorts of outside investors like John Paulson, the hedge fund manager in the US, who's been looking at Greece saying, I'd like to invest in Greece, but I'm certainly not going to do it until there's a sense of stability and certainty in Greek politics. And you can be darn sure he doesn't mean uh, a thumping series of victory. I can tell you that, that about Greece and its development. Greece has never developed on the basis of foreign investment coming in. That, that has never happened. There is no history and no tradition of large, substantial foreign investment coming in and developing the country. Uh, moreover, generally speaking, there is no country that has developed through foreign investment alone. Foreign investment is always complementary. Greece needs to restart uh, its own domestic engines of growth. And then if that happens, 
uh, we can discuss what would happen with foreign investments. Well, I understand that point, but it's not just about investment, it's also about lending. It's about Greece over the next year needing to service its debts, because you know yeah. that tens of billions of euros of debt are going to come up for renewal. Um, the money markets are astonishingly bad for Greece right now. I think 10% uh, yields demanded at the moment, and it's going to go higher probably if the polls suggest Syriza is going to win this election. How do you explain how Greece borrows money in the future if you write off the ECB and the IMF and the, the money markets across the world just don't like what you're saying? This is going to be a difficult problem, of course. Um, I'm not entirely certain what decisions have been taken uh, by the leadership of, of Syriza on this, but it's a difficult problem. The point I want to make, though, is that about 80% of Greek debt is actually in official hands. The, the part of Greek debt which is uh, in private hands is very small. Greece borrows, fundamentally, to keep its debt going, to service its debt. It doesn't borrow to develop or to put money uh, in investment projects uh, and so on. So if it gets a debt write-off, if it reschedules its debt, then its relationship to the, uh, to the international markets will be put on a different footing. The last thing I want to say on this is mm. that it's usually very bad economics to uh, manage your own domestic affairs with an eye to the international markets. That's not the way to do it for an economy the size of Greece. Yeah, the international mar markets matter, but that must not be the principle on which you organize your economy. That's a disaster, and we've seen it in Greece the last few years. Let's get back to European politics, because uh, this is another... Another element in the sort of extraordinarily complicated situation Greece finds itself in. In 2010 and 2011, when all of that discussion was taking place about the bailouts, and of course we've had two now in Greece, it seemed clear that, that the key EU member states, Eurozone states, led by Germany, were desperate to keep Greece inside the Eurozone, if at all possible. Now, looks very different. We've seen comments in the Spiegel magazine over the last few days where Greek, uh, German officials have been quoted as saying that a Greek exit from the Eurozone would be, quote, uh, manageable and almost unavoidable if Syriza wins this election. Now, you personally might not mind that because you've wanted to get out of the <laughs> Eurozone for a while, but Syriza is committed to staying inside the Eurozone. So how can you square that? The time for Greece to uh, get out was in 2010, 2011 for a number of reasons. That was a historic opportunity which was missed. We are where we are at the moment. Um, Europe has become stronger in some ways and he has erected um, basically firewalls uh, around the country. And you would accept, would you, as a leading economist, you would accept that, frankly, the Eurozone could now survive a Greek exit? I would not be as insouciant about this as a lot of people seem to be. First, because... Um, the bond markets and the money markets are always prone to worry and concern about what might happen with other borrowers in the, in the euro market. Second, because if there is a Greek default, uh, if indeed the worst uh, emerge, the worst emerge, uh, then the European Central Bank would find itself in a very peculiar position because the European Central Bank um, has lent a lot of money to Greece. And if Greece defaults on that money, then the balance sheet of the European Central Bank will not ve look very healthy. So... Uh, Greece still has uh, uh, some... You're saying Greece still has some leverage, some, some bargaining leverage, chips. Yeah, yeah, some leverage. Not as much as he had in 2010-11. But isn't the biggest problem, that, and obviously we can't prejudge the election result, that, that in the end, the Greek people, having looked at the possibility of a, a Grexit, as it's called, have decided they don't like the idea. Because whether they vote for Syriza or not, opinion polls seem very clear that up to 74, 75% of Greeks say that they believe Greece should stay in the Eurozone pretty much at all costs. I know that very well myself because I've argued for exits. Uh, I've been arguing for exit for a long time and uh, I've, had, um, let's, uh, I've had some flack come my way from Greeks. Um, so I know that what, what you're saying is true. Syriza doesn't want to take the country out of the No, out but, of the but Euro. that's the point. If Syriza doesn't want it and the public mood is very much against it, then frankly you've got much less room for manoeuvre, much less leverage than you personally would like to believe. That's true. Uh, for me personally. I think that this is one of the biggest problems um, that Syriza is likely to face. I've argued uh, that openly in public debate in Greece, but that is my own view. I don't make policy. 
Greeks seem to think that um, um, they've had enough of what there is. Syriza will not take them out of the monetary union and they'll try something else. So if I'm reading between your lines, what you're suggesting to me is that your great concern is despite your friendship and your advice to Syriza leaders, you believe Syriza leaders will cave in after winning an election if they win it and they will ultimately bow to the demands continued demands coming from the ECB? I don't know if they're going to do that. I think they're going to face enormous pressures, enormous pressures. Uh, it's not going to be a Tea Party. Um, people talk to you very nicely when you go and meet them uh, when you're in opposition. They talk to you very differently when you're in government and you've got such a program. They'll face enormous pressures. I don't know if they're going to cave in. It's possible that other options uh, will also prevail. It's, it's actually um, very fluid um, mm. uh, at the moment. No one knows qu quite uh, what is likely to happen. Here's a big thought for you, and it, it's an important one, I think, for all of our uh, viewers around the world and listeners, and, and it's this. Your consistent message since 29, 2010 has been that austerity kills any chance of these struggling European economies truly recovering and finding a path back to growth and prosperity. But surely recent history suggests you're plain wrong. Take one example, Ireland. It has fulfilled all the conditions set for it by the Troika. It has been through deeply difficult times and it has taken on board austerity and structural reform. And as a result today, Ireland is the fastest growing economy in Europe. It's got surpluses it never imagined. And to quote the finance minister, the turnaround is a direct consequence of the sacrifices made by the Irish people. Austerity can work. No. Ireland has a, a, a ratio of exports to GDP which is quite unique. It's well over 100%. Because it's very competitive. No, because it, it, followed, it followed the policy of low tax. For foreign well, capital. You can argue that's one element of competition. He has attracted a lot of uh, uh, US and other uh, multinationals and who, who, that basically use Ireland as a staging post. Ireland, uh, the, the Irish economy is very unique in Europe. Well, I mean, good luck to the Irish. I'm not, I'm not complaining about it, but that's not an economy. Well, why can't Greece become a bit more Irish? Because why, the, why stick to your old style tax and spend thinking when in fact there is an, a model in Europe called Ireland which suggests that you could take on board the message coming from the Troika, you could completely restructure your economy and you could be a success. No, the, 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 the Troika policy was we'll apply austerity, then your exports will grow and as the exports grow you will do better, you will go back to growth. It worked after a fashion in Ireland but the reason why it worked is because the proportion of exports to GDP in Ireland is like no other country in Europe and they cannot be two islands. The second reason why it worked to a certain extent in Ireland is because a lot of the Irish uh, young basically left the country. So uh, the success of Ireland, such as it is, um, has to be taken with a pinch of salt. You cannot replicate that elsewhere. Greek exports have actually been declining this year. So. Uh, policy, uh, and you want to make Greece less competitive no, by raising on, wages, on the, by raising on, pensions on the, and government spending? On the contrary, what Greece needs is a dose of aggregate demand. It needs to boost its domestic demand. It needs to get the economy uh, moving. Greece has got 1.3 million unemployed, which is a huge proportion uh, of, of, of its labour force. A final thought, and it goes back to what you said at the beginning, that this is an absolutely crucial election, maybe the most important since the dictatorship, you said. Um, isn't the danger that after this election, Greece is going to be more divided, more polarised than ever, there won't be any certainty about its future political direction, and that the forces, frankly, of extremism in Greece may well be on the rise? That will depend on what Syriza does and whether Syriza is seen to have succeeded or not. Syriza, in a sense, is the last hope. It's the last hope for Greece, and actually, in some ways, it's, it's a serious hope for Europe, because... Europe doesn't work. Right? The, the monetary union in Europe has actually failed and growth is very, very weak in Europe. Syriza is a serious hope for Greece. If it doesn't work, if it reneges on its program, or if it collapses, uh, no one can exclude these poss possibilities, of course. If that happens, then yes, the future doesn't look too, too, too good in Greece. But I'm hopeful. I think that uh, um, at least a good start can be made to fixing the disaster that's the Greek economy uh, at the moment. Well, we'll know what the Greek people decide on January 25th. But for now, Kostas Lapavitsas, thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kostas.